All right, guys, it's a new day. Been to the gym, been to the sauna, done some meditation. I'm ready to head on to the, this day. Today, I decided to do something different. I'm gonna change the environment and go play at the win. So that's the casino on the other side of, I mean, not of the island. We are here on the island in Taipa where the Venetian is and I'm going on the mainland, so to speak, uh, on the Macau side to play at the win. That's because oh, the bus is here. Done, I'm here at the win. Uh, so what I was saying, is that I want to play at the win because I'm tired of seeing the faces of people who I play every day and I have bad beats, I make mistakes against and uh, I think the leveling word is too high in my head right now and I, I need a break from them so uh, the best thing to do is come and play at the win, see how the games are here so this is the win I'm uh, gonna cross over and keep you updated with today's hands. See you! Alright guys, it's break time. Three hours into the session. I said three hours or four hours? It's four hours into the session and things are working well first of all most importantly i feel good at the table i don't have any biases tied to certain players uh, so um, that's a good thing because i can just focus on playing my, my poker however weak it is these days but uh, yeah let's go quickly over a few hands so uh, two interesting hands that are more notable one in which i think i made a um, little mistake i have ace king i uh, raise over an under the gun limper uh, and we go heads up to a flop the flop is jack 6-6 six, six. i see bet a third of the pot and he he raises me four times my uh, my uh, sea bet uh, i decide to call these type of small bets i notice that they usually induce a raise on a pair board so i decided to to flat the turn uh, doubles the jack so it's jack six six turn jack and he uh, bets again this time his sizing is uh, smaller so uh, I think I have another easy call here. The river though is another six. He thinks for a while, puts his chip like he's gonna make a bet and eventually decides to check. This usually is a sign of weakness from what I've seen. They, they want to scare you into thinking they have a hand that could bet so uh, that um, this is their way of buying a cheap showdown and um, I couldn't say I fell for it but I, I didn't think that I have too many I, I don't know what I was thinking because here I can have over pairs that now most definitely are good yeah I can shove and throw him off a chop because we're mostly chopping here I don't think he ever checks a jack or a six and any pair under jacks it's um, it loses so uh, I, I basically never lose here so I have nothing to lose I have to push all in but I don't know why I check back and he had 10 deuce offsuit so imagine that so this is good news it means that the games are are good here at the win there's a straddle a, a short stack makes a, makes a straddle I uh, raise 500 from the bottom big blind calls straddle calls and I see bet with flash draw and over cards and uh, the struggle and the big blind calls and the struggle moves all in for 3250 I think I don't want to just call here to give small blind a good price and then to play in a protected pot so I, I mean raise here and he thinks for a while and eventually folds and we get lucky we hit the flush on the river and the poor guy had 10-7. Uh, nothing he could do here if he plays like that and being that short. We win this one too. It's good. Uh, I'm gonna 
have dinner now and then go back in there uh, for um, a couple more hours and then uh, probably home where else could I go <laughs> see you all right guys the session is over it's done uh, we won I mean I won I won uh, 15,000 Hong Kong finally I broke the ice as we like to say it uh, booked the win for today I think I also played good I have I had good enough spots where I could uh, capitalize on my aggression and got uh, lucky in some other spots so it was a good session now I'm here waiting for the bus because you know I don't have money for taxi as I'm running bad <laughs> So uh, that's it for, for today. I like the games here at the win. I think I'm gonna come back uh, tomorrow to see if, uh, if it's a long-term thing. We'll see, we'll see. But up until now, very, very weak players, the ones who looked to be regulars uh, were making obvious mistakes. And uh, yeah, I feel good and that's most important here. See you tomorrow. A new day, waiting for the bus to go again to the win. It's 1 p.m. But today I'm not gonna force it. I don't want to force the 10 hours of play. So I shifted into being more present at the table and playing in a more, in a more better state of mind. The volume will have to suffer but that's okay i said it from the beginning i don't want to focus too much on the volume if things don't go well and things are not well so today the only focus is going to be playing good and feeling good wish me luck another session done here at the win another successful session one twenty-five thousand very 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 good tables at some point i had like three big whales in my table i uh, didn't expect the games to be that good here probably it's not the case uh, for long term but i'm glad uh, there are good now yeah many good uh, favorable situations so i took advantage of that and uh, booked another win the hands, I have a few hands, but I'm not in the mood to share them right now. I could while I wait for the bus, but I'm tired, guys. I'm tired. I just want to go home and eat because I've only had one meal today. I had the dinner with me, but the table was too good to leave. And here they don't let you eat at the table your own food. And I have to go out and it will, I mean, it takes at least 40-50 minutes and I didn't want to lose that time in the table plus I was not that hungry but now I am that's it for today see you last four days of the poker October challenge we are still down still losing money of course that's not that important at this point maybe I have a chance to finish break even the month Something else I wanted to touch on. Do uh, you guys think I'm complaining too much? Uh, because certainly this is not the message I want to, to send over through my videos. But I want to be as real as possible and I want to present what's going on here without any softening. So I, I've been trying to do that to, to be as real as possible. And to be honest, this is also one of my, my worst months I ever had since I've been playing poker and especially since I've been playing live poker, which is for about four years now. It's actually a great coincidence that in the month when I decided to do this challenge, uh, I'm, I'm running so, so poorly. So overall, uh, this uh, really affected me and affected my play. Uh, in ways that I didn't know uh, I can be affected so for sure I've learned a few things about myself and about where my limits are 
and uh, I know what I have to do uh, continuing uh, further with my poker career I know I need to study more and uh, I know where my playing limits are now where my knowledge limits are where my uh, psychological limits are knowing those boundaries I can now work towards expanding them that being said another day in which I will go and play at the wind today because I I started enjoying that atmosphere right there see you later for some updates bye So guys, speaking of uh, being honest, I just took the bus, the wrong bus, to go to Macau side. Uh, arrived in Macau side and I was pretty far away from the wind. I said, okay, I'm probably gonna get there if the app said that this is the bus that I should take, I'm probably good. But I realized too late that actually the bus is going back, taking the bridgeway and coming back to Taipa. So here I am, back in Taipa, waiting for a taxi now. Um, 30 minutes later, 30 minutes wasted. <laughs> so, that's it. It looks like all the taxis coming from that, that side, from the bridge, are full. So, uh, I'm not gonna just stand there. I'm walking back to the place where I left. <laughs> so I'm actually very close to, to our home now. Um, yeah, walking back there and I will take a taxi this time. Although, usually it takes just about the same time with the taxi uh, compared with the bus. Maybe five minutes later with the bus. Plus, sometimes uh, I can't find a taxi to go from my home to the wind. So, um, yeah, that's why usually the bus is better. But this time I fucked up. Alright. I've done it. I'm here. An hour delay, but it was fun riding uh, the bus through Macau, seeing Macau. What a beautiful thing. It's been a couple of days since my last update. I've been so lazy. Um, so just a quick overview of the past two days one in both of them um, I had many hands uh, many good hands winning hands uh, not so many losing hands so run good overall it looks like when I run good I don't feel like uh, making vlogs so maybe I do like to complain a lot <laughs> in these vlogs uh, so I should be more mindful of that so uh, see you and we are in the last day of my October challenge. Last day. It's been, it's been a hell of a ride. I couldn't say it's a successful one. So we have, we have 193 hours played. If I play eight hours today, I will be there to 200, and 200 hours, which I consider to be a good result volume wise because you know all the thing things that stood in my way the golden week in the beginning of the month where i waited like five six hours every day to wait into a game then the bad run that sent me home many times and i think i took two or three extra days overall extra free days in which i didn't play at all because uh, my mental state was not uh, ideal for poker but uh, so overall I'm happy with uh, my volume considering this is my second ever my second biggest month in volume so I, I think it's uh, it's good enough 200 hours given these conditions and also given the fact that I usually play like 150 hours maybe less in a month so a 33 percent increase that's that's something significant for me now money wise it wasn't so good 
but you know there there has to be months like this as well in poker and i i think i've learned a few things this month but i'm gonna i'm gonna think about this and maybe maybe make another video with uh, lessons i've learned and stuff i did well stuff i did bad but until then let's finish this challenge let's go today play some poker uh, discuss some hands later and see what's going on and it's done the poker october it's done today was the last day i'm just turning back from the casino and i have a, a bunch of hands to tell you i played 10 hours <laughs> so i finished strong uh let's quickly go over the hands first hand we have um, a jack offset in the small blind and the guy raises to two big blinds there's a call and I make it uh, 1200 the big blind moves all in for 3600 so even though um, it might seem that I'm getting good odds to call here I'm actually not the big blind I think it's very tight so against uh, tens plus and ace queen range I think I'm doing uh, poorly and at best at best maybe I'm break even so I lay this down and then there's another similar hand that I laid down so there's a raise from under the gun to 400 and then there's two calls and I'm in the small blind with ace queen offsuit and I make it 2000 and the under the gun player moves all in for 8000 the other two players fold and now it's back to me it's kind of a similar thing I have to put uh, 6000 into a pot of 17 almost I need something like I don't know, maybe 35% and usually this should be a call with ace-queen against a competent player but the situation at the table was in such a manner that this guy was really really tight and I don't think he is uh, having anything less than ace-king so maybe he can have pocket jacks or tens but I don't think he shoves ace king here, especially I had a very tight image at the table and uh, I think I should get a lot of respect in these situations. So I decided to lay it down and the guy shows ace king after that, so that's a good lay down from, uh, from us. Then I have ace queen again and I, uh, I make a squeeze from the blinds kind of a similar story to the previous two hands I get called in the big blind which is a very, uh, kind of loose player uh, playing too many hands, calling too, too many 3-bets capable of bluffing post-flop, uh, spewy you know, all, all you want from a recreational player uh, on your table the flop comes queen 10 7 with a flush draw i decide to check with the intention to check shove probably because i know he's capable of uh, betting very wide here thinking about it now considering my image at the table maybe he will not he will not bluff very often against me in that specific 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 scenario but anyway i check he quickly checks back the turn is an 8 of course he doesn't really have too many strong hands but also he might have many draws and mid mid hands like mad, made hands like a pair plus a draw or uh, other things like that so uh, I'm in a really difficult situation out of position if I bet like half pot or two thirds pot and get called I'm in a difficult spot on many many rivers uh, and I don't want to check so he can get a free card so uh, I decided to just move all in for uh, almost double pot size bet 
uh, and he snap calls me <laughs> and of course I didn't want to see that the snap call but he had pocket nines <laughs> so we are actually ahead he has an open-ended straight draw and a set draw so he has two outs to a set and unfortunately uh, he gets a six on the river and uh, that's it and then after a couple of more hours of play small pots uh, I've been winning like sea betting winning stuff like that uh, I've took a lot of pots pre-flop because I I was running bad with, uh, with cards, I didn't play too many hands and I was having a really really tight image in a very very loose game and I, I tried to capitalize on that and I think it worked very well by doing uh, big uh, raises pre-flop and taking it down um, because people were aware of my image and they would fall to me very often so I won a bunch of uh, small pots, then this hand came when I open aces and I get a call uh, in position and a call from the big blind. The flop comes king 5-4, uh, I see that I get raised, big blind call calls. Now fortunately we were like 7,000 deep, all three of us me and the, the the razor on the flop were a little bit deeper maybe a thousand more uh so i decided to just get it in against these two guys they were all both splashy and uh i i, I can get it in really uh confident here to be honest yeah uh, i get it in against six three and against king ten Unfortunately, a 10 hits on the river and we lose the main pot. We only get like a consolation prize for 2000, the side pot. Yeah, the night, it's not going good. But fortunately, the table was very, very good and uh, there was potential and I forced myself to, to stay. And then eventually I have pocket kings. I make a squeeze pre-flop and I get called from the initial razor the flop is ideal for a hand like a pocket kings a very a low flop I see bet he calls I see bet half pot on the turn as well and he moves all in for somewhere around 12,000 I think and I call he has pocket queens and this one we win after all, I finished break even, which I consider a huge success for for those two hands that I got sucked out on. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad this this October challenge finished.